telepathy is death. Number 24. Um, before we get going, I want to thank you to McDurgan and Wendy LeBlanc, two patrons. Um, you guys help this channel grow and help me do things that I wouldn't be able to do without you. I do appreciate it. anybody else wants to check it out. Uh, the link will be in the description. We have a special guest here with us. His name is Sirik, a.k.a. Cedarwall. Dot studios on Instagram. You can see that here on the overlay. Uh, sir, how are you doing, sir? Doing great, man. Thanks for uh, getting me on here, and thanks for uh, the invite and just like being able to talk Star Wars. I love that. Absolutely, absolutely. I found Surik. By the way, your name is Mitra Surik, and I have to, I have to put that out there. <laughs> you have, you, have your name, uh, you, you are the, you are the Jedi exile. So that makes everything so <laughs> yes, much better. That's, that's about right. It yeah. makes it so much better. Um, I found Surik because I follow um, first guy I really started following who did these things is uh, Hirano. And who yep. Hirano is, I had him as a guest. Um, he does photography on the Black Series action figures. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different pages out there that uh, that actually do this. Um, but I find it's very few and far between. Uh, you can tell there there's a skill level. There's a skill gap, so to speak. There's people who are really great with it, professional. And then there are people who do it and it's their hobby but you can tell that um there's just a different level of passion that goes into the way certain people do things and if you go ahead and take a look on instagram cedarwall.studios right now you'll actually see exactly what i'm talking about um this the one that really stood out to me uh there was a few of them but the one that really stood out to me the most was you had recreated the anakin skywalker scene from um uh, attack of the clones when he's kind of you know, standing out, not really an exact recreation, but that's what it reminded me of on Naboo when yep. he's, you know, thinking about his mother and he's saying, I'm going to go find her. That, Meditating. that shot was sick. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. And then of course the Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan when I, I love that one too. And I can right. tell that you're a big Ahsoka fan as well. Cause there's a lot of Ahsoka stuff and cat, you're yeah. going to love this, this one. He's got, uh, he's got Grand Admiral Thrawn Black Series uh, action yeah. figure on there as well. So he's got one with Moff Gideon from uh, Mandalorian, <laughs> which is really creative, I thought. Yeah. So, yeah. Funny I'm... how I got that figure was uh, I was in – okay, so I was in – I think was it Target or Walmart? I think it was Target because I think it was a Target exclusive, if I remember. No, I don't even know. If... Anyway, I had gotten the figure uh, from one of those stores, and – you know, I was just kind of in the toy aisle, like always, you know, you go to the store as a toy collector and you walk in the toy aisle. It's like the first thing you do. Right. And I'd walk in the aisle and I, you know, I was just kind of searching through because of course there's absolutely nothing in the toy aisles as always recently. And of course there's just like these two same figures like that they had, like a whole bunch of them. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, I sent a picture of it to my buddies and I was like, still nothing on the shelves. And one of them, he, he says... There's Thrawn on the shelf, and I said no, no, there's not. I just check. He's like, no, there was. Check again, and I and I turn back. I look in the in the aisle again, and I uh, move a couple of the of the figures, and there's Thrawn, just oh, like man. in the back, and I'm like, no way. Someone was hiding them. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting! <laughs> oh my god, I'll grab that guy quicker than anything. I'm gonna yes. share. Yes. I'm gonna share <laughs> one. I'm gonna share one that was just brilliantly done by Sirik here in the yeah. chat real quick and i want you to take a look at it cat it's it's really cool really cool so when you get when you get a chance to open that link um no there's a lot of great stuff and you also are on tiktok um and you do videos on tiktok uh, i've seen a few of the lightsaber ones and, and look, just give me a background on, on the tick on tiktok and and how you how you've been doing that and kind of what your what your strategy yeah. is for tiktok because um, so I need to get I started, my game up on TikTok too, so I'm gonna take notes here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so when I started TikTok, it was a I didn't really post much, and I had another account that I took down just because it was a I, don't know, I didn't really do anything with it. But I had been posting just kind of like I started out with impression videos, like that I do voice impressions, and you know, of course, you'd get like almost no views, and it was just like okay, like I'm just doing this for myself because I really like it. And, you know, um, then I 
kind of gotten this new new I got, I'd gotten a new channel on my TikTok and I started posting some saber like that was the first one I posted that was a saber video. I'm um, just doing a really a, a test on it just to see if it right. I got any eyes on it. And I did get a quite quite a few views on it. It was it was kind of cool. And from then on, like doing the the saber uh, videos, because that's a pretty big trend on TikTok now. Is because there's a lot of uh, um, you know cosplayers out there, which I think the cosplay community is very cool. I'd love to be a part of that for sure. Right. And um, so I'd been posting some saber videos, and um, some of them would get more views than others. But there's this one that I did that. It was like a, my I think it was the first video where I actually did like a transition type thing, hmm. and it like it was crazy how how many views it got. I was just and it was insane. And um, you know I had then I had a few people like asking me like oh like what what saber um did you get or what you know what brand of saber like you know is it good or bad? I had gotten a few DMs and so that was very cool. Um, and then I did get a few requests for my uh, voice my voice acting, whatever, my voice impressions. And they're like, Hey, right. you should do this, this impression, whatever. So, and now I haven't done too many voice impressions as of late, but I do want to get back into, into doing that. Cause like, I do have a lot of plans for that, but yeah. um, as far as for the saber, uh, the saber, um, TikTok, I guess, um, I had, it's, it's just been so fun kind of learning, you know, new things about, um, you know, how to do all these different tricks, you know, you're, you're learning as you as you do these TikToks. You know, you you can fi- you find something out maybe that you didn't know you could do, or you know, whatever it may be. It's it's really fun to kind of learn in the process of doing these. Right, and and you have a lot of uh, like you started your your even your Instagram. You started that like relatively recently, and have already built up quite a yeah. following on Instagram. Yeah, I can see actually because I'm taking a look here, scrolling through, just kind of admiring all the things you do. You had 400 Instagram followers back in back in January, and now you're well over well over a thousand. Yeah, it's it's a crazy dude. I yeah, can't. I think you have four times. You're at, you have one you have 1,620 followers on Instagram, so you're four times what yep. you were seven months ago, and that is yeah. growing incredibly quickly as well. And TikTok is probably growing really fast as well too yeah yeah and i can i can um, clearly see why which leads me to which leads me to my next question um, unless you wanted to add something there i'd cut you off a little bit no you go go ahead man go ahead um so with you know i see a lot of different you know you have pretty much all of the star wars movies well represented um including some of the eu stuff as well mm-hmm. uh what, what's your favorite star wars era and and why mm-hmm Sure. Uh, so my favorite era would have to be the prequels, um, mainly because I enjoy shocking the, um, the twenty year old's <laughs> favorite pre- era is the prequels. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what would be what would happen if I said the sequels? Like everyone would have just lost their mind. <laughs> hey, hey, I gotta tell you, I gotta immediately t- kick you. <laughs> like, I, hey, you know, like I always say this. Um, uh, every, <laughs> it, it, not really. Are you though? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, but I mean, you know, I, it is what it is. There are people who are going to be fans of the sequels, and there, there's just yeah. not going to be any way of getting around that. Now, if they are fans of the sequels, we're, they're going to be challenged on this show. If anyone did any research whatsoever and came in here like, oh, my favorite is the sequel, then of course you would know that you're probably going to get challenged on that, and we can have a conversation exactly. about yep. that. But nope. <laughs> comes the territory. Yeah. But, but the prequel the prequels, you know, I grew up with them. Kat grew up with them. We we love them as well. So, you know, we mm-hmm. granted I think I, I'm I'm pretty critical of uh, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. I don't I don't necessarily think Fair I think they're I don't think they're necessarily the best Star Wars movies, but I still enjoy watching them. I, I you know, mm-hmm. I have fond memories mm-hmm. about them and uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of sentimental value with them. And I respect that. I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. Uh, you know, you mm-hmm. grew up right, yeah. right with them. Oh, well, I grew up actually with. Um, well, I how can I? I guess I, I guess you didn't. You were four when Revenge of the Sith came out. Yeah, I was gonna say because, like, I I don't think, I don't know if I remember uh, if I watched the prequel or the Revenge of the Sith in uh in theaters. I don't know if my dad. My dad claimed that I did see Revenge of the Sith in theaters with him, but. You know, he, he likes to sugarcoat a lot. You're like, so. liar! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Liar! <laughs> no, but, um, 
how I, I guess that my the era the true era I actually grew up with watching in theaters the true era of Star Wars would be the sequels. Um, I saw. Oh, that's the that's the you know, those are the films I uh, saw. You in actually theaters. for sure um, saw in theaters, right? Right. Yep. Absolutely. That's and fucking I tragic. Saw <laughs> right. The first movies you see <laughs> in theaters. Like are... the, it's kind of like uh, watching the Titanic sink, but uh, you're like enjoying every moment of it. But it's like watching the Titanic sink. Oh you know? man, I, I gotta tell you, and... I didn't enjoy any of that. It was <laughs> it was like I was I was the third class passenger. And I was trapped in, <laughs> yeah, right, trapped right. in the fucking bottom while it was sinking, and they barred me from coming up for at least some air before I died. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's like that yeah, scene in actual it. Titanic where the old old uh, people are in bed holding each other's hands while the fucking water's <laughs> rising up. That, that's how me and my buddy felt when we were watching Last Jedi. <laughs> like, yeah. We're going on down this thing together, man. Right. Uh, so, um, I had wa- like I said, I'd watch the the sequels in theaters and to be honest when i had watched them all in theaters for the first time besides the last jedi um i enjoyed it like the first time through watching it in theaters because like you know you there's you nothing wrong with that man oh yeah i enjoyed yeah. it and you know like for me for me i think i enjoyed the rise of skywalker the most out of all three of those movies like yeah um because at least full theater reaction first right. time and I had, you know, I was with my buddies, you know, we, we were just kind of like chilling out, you know, I'd gotten a handful of them and it was great. Like, sure, it's a good time, you know, right? With laughed, your friends. We and cried. Was, right. Right. I get that. It was, it was fun. Yeah. It, it was a Star Wars experience. And, absolutely. Um, but then as you, you know, and then of course you see Force Awakens and it's nostalgic, but not, Force Awakens was honestly just a rehash of A New Hope. And I could see every, like, from the moment that I got out of the theater and my dad had turned to me and said, that was a, literally a New Hope 2.0. Yeah. And I'm like, you're right, that is. Yeah. And um, my dad actually grew up watching the original trilogy in theaters. So he grew up watching New Hope, Empire, and OG Return of the fan, Jedi. right, right. Yeah, OG fan. Mm-hmm. So he, he's, he got me into Star Wars for sure. What's his um, thoughts on, on the uh, sequels? He said he enjoys them. He uh, he said he, he thinks they're definitely different from the other films but he said he, he definitely thinks they're enjoyable yeah i he said see, i mean he said of course they're not his favorite but like he said he could sit down and watch them just because it's star wars you know it's, right i get that and there there's a difference between um you know is he would you say he's a pretty hardcore fan or he's like a pretty casual fan or he's a casual fan he'll right. he'll watch the movies right oh, okay. yeah he was, and that, was, that's... He was actually surprised. <laughs> yeah he was, I was he was gonna surprised say walking in walking out of a uh, solo a star wars story yeah. He was surprised that Maul was still alive. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. He was yeah, like, yeah. he turned to me and he goes, wasn't that Darth Maul? And I'm yeah. like, yeah. And he goes, he uh, goes didn't, he, didn't I watch didn't him get Maul cut in die? half and fall in a <laughs> hole? Yeah, he's like, didn't you did watch that one? Yeah, yeah like, you saw like, that. Reverse, he said Qui-Gon. He's like, didn't Qui-Gon kill him? I'm like, no, I killed Qui-Gon. Uh, yeah. He's like, wait, who is the other one? And I was like, Obi-Wan. He's like, Obi-Wan. He's like, Obi-Wan killed, killed yeah, there Maul. You go. Like, oh, that's kind of came a, back? That's like, kind yeah, of a yeah. recurring like, theme, don't you think? I mean, I heard something, and and you probably have a different perspective on this than we do. Yeah. But I, as great, there, there are great moments with Darth Maul, especially in Clone Wars. Um, I mean, that last season of Clone Wars with the fight between Ahsoka and Maul, that's epic. There's no, there's, when, when Order 66, um, my my buddy who's a big fan uh, like me uh, he's he, he said he remembers like screaming no like when order 66 is like you know it, it's it's announced and then maul like wakes right. up and is you know what i mean that shot i only saw it once i don't remember exactly how it goes but i remember a little bit of it um like maul kind of like wakes up and is basically like it, it's happening you know and then Ahsoka, yeah. and then all the you know the clones are are turning against Ahsoka like that's a, that's a powerful scene especially when they fight each other so you know there are some good moments and, and I like the best thing about Maul coming back to me was actually when he died again um mm-hmm. Obi-Wan uh that that moment between the two of them is rather powerful however right. um I think when you get a comic book effect here when you start bringing characters back left and right um for example, you know, Maul, and then we got the Emperor come back, and now Boba Fett, to me, made a lot of sense. 
um, because mm -hmm. he has all these gadgets to get out of a situation like that. Right. Um, to me, that he was wearing makes a suit sense. too. I mean, he was wearing a Beskar armor suit. I mean, the, right. You I'll, can the write Star that. Would be very would like that. I don't think the Sarlacc yeah. would like that. And much. that's and that's one of my problems actually with Return of the Jedi was how cheapish and slapstick they made Boba Fett in that one. Um, yeah. But regardless, I can see that. I, I can't see how someone gets literally cut in two pieces, falls down this shaft that you can't see the bottom of. Um, and then survives that. And then with the Emperor Palpatine, um, with Darth Vader throwing him down a shaft, screaming to his death, and then this huge blast of dark energy comes up. It right. It seems... And then the Death Star dead. explodes. And then the Death Star <laughs> explodes into Literally pieces. Literally atoms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, to, <laughs> that to me, we're starting to cheapen stuff. And then the thing that really scares me is what I'm hearing now is that they're thinking about bringing back Mace Windu. I I really am afraid that we're going to be bringing back all these... Like, where the hell was Mace Windu if they bring him back? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, too. Like, where the hell did they go? Was where he the doing? hell was yeah. Ahsoka? Oh, she was brought back or technically transported out. I thought she mm -hmm. should have died from Vader. I thought that was a powerful end to her character. And then they were like, psych. Um, there, there's just, to me... Star Wars needs to carry an emotional impact when characters yep. die. But if we we're getting a comic book thing where we're starting to bring characters back, um, it kind of like you can write yourself out of anything. It's like Disney's like we can do whatever we want as long as it makes money. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's I hope we don't. I know you probably have different feelings towards everything I just said. And sure. feel yeah. free to counter it if you'd like. But um, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I feel. How would you feel about a Mace Windu coming back? About uh, Mace Windu coming back. Um, so, I am kind of on both sides. At first, I was like, I kind of thought I was silly because it's like, I mean, the dude literally got fried. Like, his brain is fried, okay? He got thrown <laughs> out the window. His brain is fried. He got his arm chopped off. I don't think, if, and then plus falling to his death and managing to catch his fall with the force with one hand. Right. I don't, I don't, I couldn't really see it, see it but... You know, after people were, you know, talking to me about it and saying, you know, well, he's very powerful and he, and he, you know, he harnesses both the light and the dark uh, side of the force. I could kind of see it a little bit, but it's like, I do agree with what you're saying with how I feel like Disney's kind of just going a little too far, far with the, the characters that they bring back from the dead. And it's like, I feel like it would kind of be a disservice to, um, Anakin's turn in a way too, but also because <laughs> well, that was part of the his character's for gone turn, right? already. <laughs> they already What's they that? already did a disservice to his character anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, he, th this is the thing. Could Mace have, have survived this? If Darth Maul can survive, any of these characters could come back. I mean, any of them. Yeah, if they honestly. wrote Darth Maul back and the Emperor back, literally anything's fair game. I would be surprised if. If Qui Gon comes back through a, some loophole, like yeah, at this point, yeah, Qui Gon, yeah. he's like the only one. He all he does is get like stabbed through the gut. Too. <laughs> like, apparently, just really easy to heal there, uh, Obi Wan. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's so he's annoying. like it's like permanently dead. <laughs> and that's the other thing with the sequels. It's like I I don't understand why the force healing thing was not a thing until the sequels. Right. Right. I mean, that was something that the Jedi practiced. Right. That was something they. They had worked on, you know, and over over the years. I'm sure, like in the older public, that was the thing. Yeah, well, and you would hope public, it would be. Um, you know, the, the thing is, is that you never saw it happen. And like, if if they did practice it, that is a perfect example of when it would have been used in the same exact situation that it happens two times. I mean, I know one time literally stabbed the gut when Ray stabs Kylo. Um, but then, of course, when he, assuming has never practiced this before, or if he did, it was before he turned or, or switched sides. Yeah. Like, my, my point is, you don't ever see it before this one. So, if it was practiced, why didn't he use it? Why didn't Obi-Wan try this? Or we see it in the Clone Wars at any point in time in the cartoon, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I got no problem well, with you bringing it in the Clone powers. Wars and we're just like led to believe that, oh, okay, well, bye. You get, you're getting blasters getting shot 
like by just yeah. regular blaster fire and then the masters like, are letting them die for <laughs> ceiling i'm okay with it like as it's like minor stuff i like, agree right but like you get into some like a major blow through the heart or something and it's like oh i can just heal this and like she didn't like waste any energy there is no like you know like you're sacrificing yourself to save right, this person it's right. just like oh no duh. it's like that is just it's well silly she's, she's like, a well, girl if you could just heal mortal wounds she's a girl that's just, so I don't like minor she doesn't get heal hurt. injuries but 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 kylo ren's a guy so he does it and he dies that's just the right. rules. We don't. <laughs> I'm the just... my whole thoughts on the force healing thing is like, okay, like it does, and it and plus it does bring plot holes, and like like Cat said, is it brings big plot holes within the story, but um, yeah, I kind of understood. I just kind of wish they would have um, kind of fleshed out Ben Solo's character more because if they were to give us that same ending, but you know, mm. give us the full story of Ben Solo, I could I could live with it okay um the fact that they just kind of sidelined his character um I, I really love okay and so that's where i'm gonna go with um me saying that i think the last jedi is like my favorite uh sequel because it fleshes out the character of ben solo kylo ren and i think hey man Ryan i respect Thompson you for amazing. coming into the lion's den with that opinion i respect it it's gonna it's gonna get <laughs> right, countered though <laughs> it's gonna get countered though <laughs> Um, right here, no worries. I'm, here, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all good, and this is gonna happen as we as we talk to people, and everyone's gonna have different opinions. But that's what makes these these conversations fun and and worth having is that we have different opinions and we can talk about it. I yeah. the the last Jedi. I would argue that it does the exact opposite as what you're saying as far as fleshing out Ben Solo. I feel like it has the potential to do what you say it does, but it went bad when Ben Solo kind of turns into this screaming, immature little kid um, with the, on the Adat, Gorilla Adats or whatever the hell they're called. When he, when he's starting to throw Hux around and he's like, all oh, chefs, I want you to fire on him. And he's like, Wah! it's like, it's so comical and, and stereotypical. And it's just, he's like a little kid in, in this, yeah. in this scene here. And when, you know, that's kind of where if I were, I, I'm with you. I feel like Kylo Ren was the most. He had the most potential out of all the characters. He was the most exciting. I mean, Adam Driver alone being the actor, you know he's going to bring his A game. But if they oh, had, yeah. if they had, and this is my feelings towards it, if they had gone the route of Kylo, because they set this up in Force Awakens, Kylo Ren struggling to return to the light side and actually taking some steps towards the light side in, in Last Jedi which he didn't take any at all. Or on the flip side, we could have had Ray, who is on the inverse plane of this, um, maybe takes his hand and joins the First Order to to, to be with him. Like it, it would have made the whole Raylo thing make way more sense, and it also would have made everything more believable as far as you know. You you feel you actually feel like Ray's gonna gonna fall or Kylo Ren on the flip side has a chance of being redeemed. Everything kind of feels so cluttered. Like they, as we know now, they didn't have a plan. And um, it, it really feels that way. It feels like there was no no plan. Kat, I don't know if you wanted to add anything onto that or? or uh, no, pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, but you know, I, I have seen that a lot. Your opinion is pretty popular among sequel supporters is that Kylo Ren's character yeah was fleshed out and he's the best part and i agree he's 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 the best yeah. part of the sequels there's no doubt about that I, I would say that because it's i mean and i honestly would have loved if they would have made the story of the sequels based around kylo's character if they would have Me kind too. of said okay you know what we're gonna focus yeah. on and it's not because oh like you know another you know male lead in the star wars no it's not because of that it's because we need the story this is the lineage of Skywalker we're talking about. We're talking about Anakin Skywalker, exactly. right? To Luke Skywalker, to yeah. Kylo Ren, the exactly. grandson of Anakin Skywalker and the the um, nephew of of uh, Luke Skywalker. Right. 
And I think that's what we really needed in the story. We didn't need some, you know, nobody character to come in and uh, that nobody has any idea with, with other than the idea that she's the scavenger who's, you know, unremarkably strong with the force. Um, and it's like, to me, I would have loved the, the story of Ben Solo because um, we could actually see a little bit of uh, inverse from Anakin Skywalker. You know, Anakin Skywalker, right. um, you know, he falls to the dark side because of these visions right. and these nightmares in his head. Um, Luke Skywalker is tempted by the dark side at, on multiple occasions, right? And then he, he right. lashes out at Vader in, in uh, return, and and he's almost at the point where he's about to murder his own father. But, you know, then he stops and he's like, wait, what am I doing? You know, right. he looks at his hand and he goes, what am I doing? I'm not, I'm not my father. Right. Right. You, you hit and, the nail on the head there. That's, that's, that's incredibly, mm -hmm. that's, that's very, that's a, that's a take I have not, I have not heard fleshed out from someone who's, <laughs> yeah. who supports, yes. who supports the sequel. Um, you know, I normally you get people who support these movies who, who kind of justify them rather than, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. actually say what you're saying here you, you you're you're actually exactly right these movies have they stayed relatively the same but it was more focused on kylo ren's redemption i feel like mm -hmm. that would have made these movies i don't think they would have been great but what it does do is it actually <laughs> it actually does redeem um uh, like you know luke skywalker's character art can be forgiven more if we get the grandson and, and of you know of Anakin Skywalker um, redeemed if, if he does right the ship and he does return to the Jedi and and right. continue the order like there's a lot of poetic that's, that's really poetic to have the and, and it also of kind of uh, goes back to that line that was probably one of my favorite lines were in uh, Force Awakens where he's sitting in his chambers and he's like you know, grandfather, I will finish what you started, you know? Right. And that's like one of my favorite lines from Kyle Weber. It's like, that's such a badass line. Like he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna like go beyond from what his grandfather did and, you know, be like, don't not be his father or grandfather, but be something more than his, than what his grandfather right. was, right? At the same time, his grandfather literally was redeemed at the end. And you feel, and you, you would think that that would be the first thing that, Luke Skywalker would tell his pupils. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's yeah, yeah right? Story, if too. you yeah. fall to the dark side, my dad was Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can come back. Uh, but he, it seems to be this, I don't know. Well, then that's the whole argument with Luke. As right. in, Luke's he would never ruined. try to murder Kylo in his sleep yeah. or Ben at the time. That was, that was so sad. Just because he saw an image so of him falling to the dark side. It's like, bro, right. this so guy lazy. literally redeemed a Darth motherfucking Vader. That, like, is, right. that is a <laughs> Ryan Johnsonism. Oh. Because that's oh. not what was set up from Force Awakens. When Force Awakens came out, they kind of set it up as Snoke Nothing manipulated. <laughs> they did. They said uh, they said they it was your plan. fault, and then exactly. and then no. But the way J.J. Abrams set it up, he's like, uh, I don't remember who said it was. It Leia. Han kind of blames himself, and then Leia's like, "That wasn't your fault." Like Snoke got to him, or it was Snoke's fault, or something like that. I don't remember what the exact line is, but. They kind of set it up like, okay, who is Snoke? How did he get to Kylo Ren? Like, like what? How did Kylo fall and, and become, you know, twisted by him? And, and then we get this weird. Luke Skywalker was gonna kill his nephew in his sleep. Uh, what the hell is that? I mean, it, it's it's almost like Ryan Johnson never watched a Star Wars movie in his life. That's, no, he, he that's what it felt like. And I think the opening I scene kind of he has never or, watched. Or Ryan really, really went back to the to full lineage of Star Wars because if I were if I were say I were Ryan Johnson, I was directing the Last Jedi and I'm making this move because from what the plan or the idea was with the sequels is they wanted to make these films centric to each of the main characters, Leia, Luke, Han, right? And they wanted to so Force Awakens was Han's movie, right? It was based around the the character of Han, right? And 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 what he was going through and you know what he was how he was dealing with this this changing they galaxy. ruined his character as well 
He was he was the same as he was in in, he in a New <laughs> Hope. He made no yeah. problem. He's worse though because now he's a horrible father and a horrible husband. Yeah, he, his yeah. family. He, so his he's arc even was worse. redeemed. <laughs> he he had a great wrapped up arc, and he probably should have died in Return of the Jedi. But they they just went back on everything. He just he's he's back where he started in Force mm-hmm. Awakens. I mean, but he's worse. Yeah. These these movies, man, like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they're they're, then, uh, they're then, a problem right and then the other thing the second one of course last shot i was leia's movie so this was or no wait no it was luke's movie i'm sorry forgive me it was supposed to be luke's movie um and honestly i have a, i mean i don't have like a terribly big problem with luke's character um but i have a problem with it because it doesn't make sense from the return of the jedi honestly because we see these two different characters right we see in return of the jedi we see this optimistic you know hopeful jedi who's you know just redeemed his father and now he's seeing his father in the light of the of the force and everything's all good right and the last mm-hmm. jedi he's depressed he's moody because his nephew yeah uh, right. uh, you, you see the problem here with last jedi yeah. <laughs> Right. And the, the thing that I, the reason why I like the Last Jedi is, is mainly because um, it fleshes out each of the main characters in the sequels. It fleshes out Poe Dameron's character. It fleshes out um, a bit of Finn's character, not too much. I feel like they made him a little joke in um, in Last Jedi, it, um, but uh, Ray's I, character was actually relatively well handled in the Last Jedi. I feel like um, I feel like because she she was kind of saying how she didn't know where she belonged right and that's that whole movie is her trying to find her where she belongs she ends up you know tapping into this force connection with kylo ren which is the coolest thing in like one of the new newest coolest things in star wars is the force connection i'm like like where was that that's been done before right it's never been done before it has been done before it was done in it was done in nice old republic 2 uh with kreia and mitra um they had a they had a force bond (laughs) where where Kreia and and Mitra actually, it, not only could they communicate and see each other, um, they had the situation where if because Kreia gets her hand cut off by Darth Sion early in the game, um, Mitra actually feels the same feeling, and it's mm-hmm. kind of like whatever happens to one of them will actually happen to the other. Now it's not exactly like they're looking at each other in the room and kind of. Uh, they can interact with things in each other, each other's environment, which mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, but in a way, it had been done before. Now, here here's the problem with the sequels. If this was something that was done, that was totally connect or disconnected from the characters we already know and love, that would be one thing. I'd be much more receptive to it. But the fact is, is that they take the characters that we already know and love and grew up with and who have great stories in the EU that continue their stories and their legacies and characters and make them heroic. And, and like, I mean, Heir to the Empire trilogy is is five years after Return of the Jedi. It tells another fantastic mm-hmm. trilogy. We, right, instead yeah. of instead of that, we're led to believe that Han didn't do any of that shit. No, he had a kid abandoned his kid and his wife and became a, a deadbeat so his character sucked after return of the jedi um L- luke skywalker started a new um uh, jedi temple but that got ruined because he tried to kill his nephew and his i mean i don't even blame kylo ren's character for this i do probably do the same exact <laughs> thing um like um, kylo ren's character yeah. is basically i feel bad for him his yeah. His uncle yeah. Luke's fucking Skywalker, the savior of the galaxy, <laughs> tried to murder him in his fucking sleep. Uh, I don't really feel like he's a bad guy here. Um, yeah. Dad honest, left him. Uncle Dad left him. him. <laughs> uncle tried to kill him. Poor guy. <laughs> Mom sent him away to his on. uncle's house <laughs> for yeah, summer there's camp. There's this quote in um, the new Disney Plus Loki show where it's kind of it kind of intertwines with the the Star Wars story. It's like Loki's. I think he's talking to mobius or someone and he's like i i know something that other people don't and you know mobius goes what and he's like that nobody bad is ever truly bad and no one ever good is ever truly good and that does say a lot about luke's character is that he, no one ever good is ever truly good you know but he but but he is though 
See, this is this is where <laughs> this is where he. It, it's it's hard to. Okay, so Star Wars is different from a lot of the great um, fictions in in history because Star Wars is a romanticized um like op like space opera it's this yeah, yeah real s- hero's journey it's a hero's journey and these are not like your tragic heroes or these are not like your mm-hmm. flawed characters these are like legitimate heroes they all have all three of them have their own heroic arc and they they come out of this as the good guy and along the way luke skywalker never makes a morally questionable decision throughout any of these movies um han solo turns from a morally questionable character into a hero and of course leia is the figurehead of the rebellion and leads them to victory over the empire all three of these characters become heroes in every sense of the word now when you try to take and and their arcs were all wrapped up i mean they were all wrapped up sure they have stuff to do in the future but all their arcs are wrapped up when you take characters like this Um, who people loved and grew up with and were really icons of what it means to be a hero. And yes, they're, they're not meant to be tragic and, and, and have flaws because they're people, they're characters that people can look up to and and kids can look up to. Now, when you take them and you just destroy their, their characters in the say, in the sense of trying to make them more realistic, it, it does a disservice to, to the original content. Like now Luke Skywalker, we know where he ends up in canon in what disney has made canon which they were making up as they went you know what i mean this this trilogy wasn't wasn't treated with the love and respect and that is why you have people like myself and cat and people who are you know maybe more old school fans about it is sure we these characters are treasure and they need to be treated as such. Mark Mark Hamill, um, Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford are national treasures to us. They're they're idols in our eyes. And Disney brought them on for this new trilogy, and we were all so stoked we were getting new Star Wars. And this is what we got out of it. Um, it's heartbreaking because yes, there are kids who get these new characters, Poe Dameron and Finn, and maybe they love them. Or Poe Dameron, Finn, and Ray. Maybe they love them like we love these characters, but the problem is, in the process of doing that, they managed to not only destroy our characters, they also destroyed Anakin Skywalker, because now the Emperor is back for no yeah. reason other than this to to come up with in a in a frantic attempt to try to install drama. Um, his yeah, character, money. yeah, his character actually quite honestly is is pointless at this point he didn't do anything he wasn't the chosen right. one um, not to say that i honestly do respect ian mcdur ian Mc- ian fuck can't even talk ian mcdermott's character because he is an amazing actor like he brought palpatine oh, yeah. back in a great way but like i do agree with what you're saying is the fact that they kind of did pointlessly bring back palpatine and if they did want to bring back palpatine how i would have done it is Maybe Kylo goes on Exegol, same opening and everything, and you know he says, "I will, I killed, you know, Snoke. I'll kill you." And that is the most badass line one of that he's ever said. Well, he shouldn't that have ever come back. That's the and, problem. He should never have come back because that already yeah. cheapens cheapens Anakin because that was the whole. It cheapens everybody, not just Anakin, because they 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 toppled the Empire, and thirty years later we have basically yeah. a more strong Empire. I mean. Maybe not a more strong even George empire, Lucas, but like even George when, Lucas, yeah. Like when like people were writing the EU stories after, you know, and dealing with you know after Return of the Jedi, George Lucas was like adamant about people not like you can't bring back the Emperor. Like that was one of his rules. And then yeah. one story brought back the Emperor, but he was a clone. But like in the EU, like nobody likes that story. It's like a really bad story, and like no one's like that doesn't count. <laughs> like nobody likes it because it's just. It's just kind of like, it's kind of like what Disney did. It's just, it's really just. And and that's the thing. It's like, if they were to bring back Palpatine for even a minute, I would have had Kylo just kill Palpatine in the the first 10 seconds of the movie. Like, to me, that would have been like, okay, so Kylo Ren's now, you know, finally his own master, pretty much, right? But I do. He kind of was that that already. After. After he killed Snoke, he kind of was his... He At that point, it felt like, 
okay, this he guy the is the yeah. leader, and he yeah. and then to to basically install someone ahead of him again after he just killed mm -hmm. Snoke. It, it see that there is where I kind of do agree with you about Kylo Ren's character in in Last mm -hmm. Jedi. The one thing that you could take out. Now that we have Rise of Skywalker, it ruins it. But the one thing that we did have going in the Rise of Skywalker was is Kylo Ren's character is now he's the figurehead or he's the head of the of the First Order, um, right. and, and we're, we don't know where he's going to take this. Now, if if this was in the if they instead of Rise of Skywalker the way they took it, and instead if they took it to a more personal story arc where Kylo Ren's struggling to lead these people. And maybe we get Ray falling and Kylo Ren going to the light side or, or whatever the case may be, make it more of a personal thing rather than bring back the Emperor and then a thousand Star Destroyers that can blow up planets. You know, it, it seems so cheap. It was like a 25 yeah. cent steak or steaks because you already knew what was going to happen. I mean, you, oh, yeah. there was no tense tension in this. You knew how it was going to end. The Emperor yeah. is going to die again, and all these. It, <laughs> I don't. Was anybody scared at all about these planet-killing ships? No, nobody before, was. Seen it before. I've seen it a thousand <laughs> times before. But anyway, um, it is what it is. Know, actually, in the comics, actually in the comics, uh, apparently, I didn't read the comic fully, but I watched someone do like a review on the comic. Um, Which comic had, was it? it I think it was the one, it was like one of the Vader comics. Oh yeah, those are pretty awesome. I like those ones. They are, yeah. I I don't remember which one, but but it was like one of the new ones. And Vader apparently went to Exegol with Palpatine before before Return of the Jedi. Oh yeah. And they had oversaw the whole operation of these this this fleet that they were building. <laughs> and and I'm then it, it's a, such a big plot hole. You know why? Because guys and Luke's holding him in his arms. Why didn't Vader tell him about Exegol? Like, hey, yeah. Uh, so, Daddy Palpatine made uh, made these this big fleet now, and um, yeah, it's on Exegol. So, good luck with that. They like, why? They um, yeah. I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you. There, there's there's so many different wow. there's so many different plot holes out there. And the one the one someone put this together, and it opened my eyes. Even it made me hate these movies even more if that was possible. But um. So Ray, so so Palpatine kills Anakin, um, kills Padme, um, kills Ben Solo, and his granddaughter takes over the Skywalker's name. Mm -hmm. So so Palpatine is act Palpatine's legacy. He actually killed mm -hmm. all the Skywalkers off, and then now his granddaughter is is taking over their legacy. It's like, oh yeah. Jesus! Can you uh, imagine Palpatine sitting up and have, and like, probably in hell, just like, that's my girl. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I mean, I mean, seriously, that's that's what happens. All the Skywalkers are wiped off from from existence, and now we yeah. have a Palpatine who is just, I guess, deciding that she's a she's a Skywalker here. So fantastic yeah, they, did what they, they did what they set out to do they they set out to wipe out the, the skywalker lineage and, and, they, and uh, they did they succeeded and now there's identity politics thrown in there too now because uh <laughs> she <can>. identity <laughs> there's this one meme where it's like ray ray says she's a skywalker and then there's this guy like that's face pops on and he's like identity theft is not a joke ray yeah <laughs> no kidding basically no kidding. what it is well, um, you know, I, no, I, I go ahead. To me, is like talking, like beating a dead horse. You know, it's just like yeah, been talked about enough that it's just like, come on. I'd rather talk about the new shit that's going on. You know, the the upcoming and exciting stuff. Yeah, you know, there. Um, I I really liked the the last in Bad Batch. To me, was kind of meh. Um, there was some good stuff, yeah. but there was a lot of boring stuff. But the last yeah. one. The last one yeah. I like, I liked a lot. Kat, one. Kat, yes. This is something that I told you about was one of my complaints about the very first one when um, the snipe, what's the sniper's name again? Uh, Crosshair. 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 His character was like 
no, we need to follow orders and such and such. And he was, you know, hard nosed and he wanted to, you know, he didn't care and he didn't want to, you know, he was following the empire's rules and everything. I liked the idea that his character was doing this because he actually believed it. You know, he actually mm -hmm. believed in, in the people he was following. And I wanted his character to actually experience something that was like a war crime and then change on his own accord. But then they brought in the fact that they have these inhibitor chips and, um, you know, he, he couldn't actually, he was actually just being brainwashed. But now in this last one, it's revealed that he hasn't had his inhibitor chip in a while. And it's, he says, this is who I am. Um, right. and, and it's, it's such a great, I'm happy that they're going this way. It really does a lot to redeem, um, his character and make yeah. him much more interesting. And not only that, we yeah, get, did you guys get, uh, did you guys get, um, full, uh, revenge of the Sith vibes from that scene where he's like, we can be brothers again. And it kind of <laughs> reminds me of like the scene where um, Anakin and Padme are on Mustafar and Anakin goes, and together you and I can rule the galaxy. And then same thing with uh, Empire Strikes Back. And like every other scene, it has like that same kind of like, join me, you know? <laughs> oh man. I, oh, what did you say? Obi-Wan can't save you. Only my new powers can do that. Yeah. It's one of, one yeah. of those cringe scenes. Quinch, quinch, <laughs> Only my new powers can do that. It's like only my new powers. Yeah, exactly. It's right here oh, against me. <laughs> anyway, we're getting, we're getting into the uh, getting into the rabbit hole of Hayden Christensen. Um, you will not take over. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. My favorite. I want more, and I know I shouldn't. I my my favorite scene from the prequels is is when when uh no. you brought him here to kill me and then and then behind is 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 obi-wan standing like fucking superman in the goddamn doorway yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a great a scene. oh man he's got his chest puffed out hands on his hips like <laughs> like a upset father or something um yeah but yeah <laughs> Like, it's like, how am I going to, he's like, how am I going to walk out here in front of him? How am I going to confront him? And he chose that stance to stand on top like Superman. But, uh, uh but no. I love how he just like, his robe still, like, perfectly. He's like. <laughs> oh, he did, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, really sexual. Like, really, like, yeah, he has a nice figure. <laughs> but, uh, going, going back to, uh, Bad Batch, um, the destruction yeah. of Camino, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty I'm a pretty hardcore guy, and and you know I like to see some dark stuff. Um, the the comic or not the comic, the cartoon that I'm currently working on and directing. Um, it's 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 gonna get rather dark, and it's just it's kind of my vibe. That's why I like um, Knights of the Old Republic too so much, because it's the darkest Star Wars out there. And sure. what we get, well, besides if you count um, some of the Anakin stuff, but. And of course, uh, the Darth Bane stuff. From what I hear, I haven't read the Darth Bane stuff, but I, I kind of know this. I, I gotta read them. But from my understanding, they're pretty dark too, right, Cat? Yeah. Yeah, and I can't wait to get into that because that's right up my alley. Um, but this was fucking dark. Uh, we finally got to see some crazy shit. Because one of my problems with with Bad Batch was is that the Bad Batch they're 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 stunning everybody. There's no, they're not killing anyone. They're, they're using, which leads me to my next question. How fucking strong are these stun guns where they just like one hit and everybody just immediately falls unconscious and how, it, I, yeah. I don't know. I think Crossbow was one of the strongest. And then that one, uh, the Delta squad member, Scorch, I think. Yeah, uh, they did my boy Scorch dirty. They did my boy yeah. Scorch dirty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't watch the previous episode, Cat, if you don't want to see the Republic commandos get absolutely bitched. Um, <laughs> Because they get absolutely bitched by these guys, but uh, although I hate this show now, I absolutely hate this fucking but, show. But right we, now. See, we see, Cam we see, we see, we Ka see Camino get Ugh. get absolutely demolished. Though they they just blast it to hell, and it's really cool. And, and I'm and I'm happy that they went this route because um, we get to see some some dark stuff happen, you know, rather than everything everything at the expense of EU characters. Uh, it's always at the as expense. always, yeah. as always. You know, that's that's it one of the things about shit it. all over the EU characters. Thanks. Right, but the thing that I I think of now 
uh, when I when I think of Star Wars and it, they forced me into this position is when I think of Star Wars, I just think of straight up two different timelines. Like there's this timeline and then there's what they're doing now. And I, I, we've already been ruined, Cat, in 2017 with, with Last Jedi at this point or 2018. I was ruined in 2015. <laughs> No, I was ruined when they like just when they were like EU's no longer canon. Yeah, that, I was like, nah, right. That so me so right, right. Much. So was, we're, we've already I, I, been I, ruined. I went into like uh, Force Awakens. I'm like, this better be the best thing I've ever seen in my life, and it wasn't. And I was yeah. like, fuck you, Disney. But, but we, but we've already, we've already <laughs> experienced that that letdown. So at this point, there's nothing that we can do. Um, so while yes, it is frustrating, and I've been frustrated with it i've kind of given up in a way and whatever i see happen i see happen and I look at it in its own its own view because we still have the eu those stories aren't just going to vanish and go away um no so they're still all there now i i get what you're saying with all the stuff they're doing now it's frustrating the most because i know all these kids are never going to ever experience the eu and they're just going to see this shit um but I, I do like the way the last Bad Batch episode was handled, um, and I'm excited for, for the season finale. It's funny, the most interesting episodes for me were the beginning and then the end. Um, all the, the stuff beginning between, was really yeah. well done, I think. Like, for the, the Order 66 and Bad Batch trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Right. Crosshair kind of, like, doing what, you know, the you know what he's always meant to follow orders, right? Right. And, epic. Epic. Right. Right. Yeah, and and then the finale. I feel like there was. It's it's like it's like if you t say say if this was the bad batch, right? And say if it was like a different drink, and say it's like this exotic drink, you know, and you you try it at first, and you're like, it's it's great, you know, I like it. And then you try it again, and you're like, it's it's okay. Yeah. And then you try it again, you're like okay, I really like it. And then it's All just right. kind of like that same process over and over. That's like how I felt with every episode as I went in. It's like these episodes that like. But I also love the fact that it's kind of giving off some some Clone Wars vibes, right? Because it's like Clone Wars had some filler episodes in there every other episode, right? Right. Well, and most of well episodes, like, that's my problem with Clone Wars is there was a lot of filler in in Clone Wars. Now, same uh, with Rebels, yeah, same I, with Rebels and and Rebels too. I. <sighs> It's kind of a generation thing because your generation, I've noticed, because I follow a lot of different people on Instagram, um, you're very, you guys love, you know, Ahsoka. You love the Clone Clone Wars. I see so many accounts that are just dedicated to Clone Troopers alone. Uh, people love the Clone Wars. I mean, absolutely adore them and Clone Troopers. And to me, the Clone Troopers were just that. They were brain mindless clones that the emperor used and then discarded and mm -hmm. they never were anything more than that to me there was um there was uh fucking why am i forgetting what it's called now squadrons no republic commando and there were some great yeah. books that come out of that and those were really the deepest that the clones got to us but until the clone wars came out <clears throat> even the original 2003 clone wars yeah there was a little bit of character built into some of the uh clones but they were just kind of, and Kat, I don't know if you disagree cool. with me at this at they're all, cool. but but yeah, they were just kind of like soldiers, and you, I didn't really pay too much attention to them. I felt like they were just kind of used, abused, and then discarded for stormtroopers. Kat, what were your feelings towards the the clones? I didn't really have any. That's kind of how I felt. There wasn't, there wasn't really anything to... Like, well, Commando, but that's it. Yeah, outside of like Republic Commando and the books, um, right? I don't know. The only thing um, I just remember being really upset at Cody for shooting down. Obi yeah, you felt <laughs> betrayed from I was that. Like, hey, you, how do how come you had a little talk? Before? Yeah, exactly. You felt you. That was kind of hilarious. Cody <laughs> was the know. only one with a name, and yeah, uh, Cody, I like really got attached to. Cody. Yeah, you were because you're like, yo, <laughs> this guy and Obi Wan have rapport, and he gave him his lightsaber yeah. and said, "You'll yeah. be needing this." And then he just points at him, and the guy they, they didn't even have to Blast say anything. Him. Yeah, right. And, I'm like. Dude, what? Yeah, <laughs> now, now that that hurt, that, 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 that was <laughs> Commander Cody was our only clone to get invested yeah. in. So it's yeah, it's clear <laughs> it's clear for people who um, grew up on the Clone Wars because you know you yourself you're 20 years old. The Clone Wars came out in what 08, and then of course yeah. through throughout the 20 
early 2010. So you were just about that mm -hmm. age where these would have been the shit for you. It totally makes sense. Um, oh, yeah. But for people like <laughs> the people like us, um, you know, As uh, Asajj Ventress, there was some good stuff out there on her. She was really interesting, um, but she met her match with Anakin. Like that was it. Um, yeah. yeah, which I which I loved. It was part of Anakin's fall. Um, yeah, but. You know, General Grievous was the shit in the original Clone Wars. Like, he was this scary... He was... Dude, he was fucking... I don't know if you saw the original... Did you see the original Clone Wars? I saw the 2003 um, the miniseries, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> he was fucking up Jedi. Left and right. <laughs> he was just smashing their faces and everything. And and it God, was it was insane. brutal. Brutal. You're going to have to excuse my dog here. He's, my, my wife's getting home from the gym, so he's excited. But... Um, yeah, no, it's really great. You know, he was, he was brutal. And then we got some great Mace Windu stuff and it beautifully connected into. Mace Windu was a boss. Right, in right. In Wars, yeah. it, and it connects right into, uh, Revenge of the Sith. So when they did the new stuff for me, I, I didn't, I wasn't really a big fan. My introduction was the, actually, um, uh, the Clone Wars movie they put out and oh, God, that was, that was awful. Um, and. And, and 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 then we get this, and then we get this uh, Clone Wars um, animated series. And the first couple of seasons, I, I just wasn't invested in it. I didn't start getting invested until um, until the, third, the season. yeah, until the the um, love interest. What was her name? Sabine with not Sabine. What's her name? Sateen, yeah, yeah, Sateen. yeah. Satine, yeah, Satine. That's when I started getting invested. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Darth Maul is probably the best part of the Clone Wars, but absolutely. But mm -hmm. I still wish it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, uh, and I know, I know, I know, a lot of people will disagree with me about that. But yeah, well, um, I think you know Maul's return really was. Uh, I, I kind of liked it mainly because you know you could see just what the dark side did to him. You know, like we see this literally crawling spider like yeah dark entity just and he's just like walking around i feel like, awful for him like he's he was insane his when his brother gets absolutely fucking clapped um that that <laughs> oh, was yeah. that was heart i mean his character is really heartbreaking if you think about it he he doesn't win a single. Really tragic. He's he doesn't really win a single tragic. fucking fight ever. By the way, I think he's like zero and twenty in lightsaber fights. He's either running away or no. He win he wins a couple early because they have to establish he's back and mm -hmm. and bad. But it's he's... really sad if you read the comic <laughs> on him where um, uh, Grievous and Dooku come and kill Mother Talzin, mm -hmm. and like he comes with some like mandos and stuff, and it's mm -hmm. just to like kind of save her mm. and like he's being like he's like be he's lost basically that fight on dathomir he's like being dragged away by his mandos to the ship and he sees i think it's grievous like kill like deal the killing blow to her because mm. she's like she's keeping like dooku and them in place so that mm -hmm. he can escape basically like yeah. sacrifice it and like there's just one paddle where he's just like he screams like no as he's being giant and it's like the saddest thing ever like he's so tragic like i feel so bad for him it, it's pretty bad um, oh poor guy it, yeah, yeah i feel bad for him for sure but his his uh the most beautiful part with his character the best part of his character it's actually you know i i think is when he dies when he has this moment with obi-wan where it's like he just he's finally as he's dying he's finally letting go of everything right and and it's he's finally at peace. it's yeah. finally yeah. at peace it's almost like he's just wanted he wanted obi-wan to kill him in a way it, it's like mm -hmm. he wanted this to happen to finally end all the pain and uh you know i'm getting a little emotional thinking about it but he's laying there and fucking obi-wan's arm in the middle arms in the middle of tatooine and i don't remember what he says he say uh he, he will avenge us when yeah he, when he no that that is is some brutal stuff right there and uh it, you know I, I think it's really well done and while i i wish they didn't bring him back just for the reason that he got cut into two pieces um I, see the thing is i actually did a video about this and cat and i have had a conversation about this in the past his character should never have died in phantom menace 
they establish him as this really badass character. He kills a Jedi Master. Um, I don't know, however you want to write him getting away. He gets away. And you would have had this epic character taste in your mouth of this fucking Sith is is coming here to kick ass. What's going to happen? He killed Qui-Gon. And you, you can play on to this Obi-Wan struggle to... Um, you know, stay away from the dark side and, and Anakin's struggle even. And Obi, it actually increases Obi-Wan's resiliency and makes him more, because obviously he's like the golden boy for, for the light side. He's the textbook Jedi. Um, yeah. What you would have is this Obi-Wan staying, you know, away, refusing to give in to his hate, but then Anakin, who kind of had this father bond with Qui-Gon, now he wants to fucking kill this this guy. He wants to kill mm-hmm. Darth Maul, and it's almost like if you would have just replaced all Dooku shit with with Darth Maul, I feel like it would have been a much better payoff if you had Anakin cut Maul's head off, and you had oh. this you had this moment where when when Palpatine says kill him, it would have been epic to see Darth Maul's look in his eyes as he just you know he just was doing all these you know doing the Emperor's bidding thought he was going to be the Sith Lord. He thought everything was set up for him. It would have been epic to see all that in this moment get betrayed mm. and he realizes too late that he's been played. That would have been epic and it would have been a great way to kickstart Anakin's fall to the dark side as he kills this guy who killed Qui-Gon. Um, mm. I feel like that was a missed no, I think, opportunity. I think the Anakin's kind of sealed to the dark side. Well, his first taste of the dark side was... Uh, Tuscan Attack of the Clones, right? When he's yeah. when he's killing all those Tuscan Raiders, and that's like his first taste of the dark side, and it's like he really loves it. So from then on, from that moment on, he was always uh, Palpatine's apprentice, and that's what Obi Wan says. You know, like I think in Revenge Revenge of the Sith, I think he says to Padme, he's like Anakin. From the moment you know he killed Count Dooku, he's always been um, he's always been Palpatine's apprentice. He's always been Darth Vader from that moment on. He said that. So, so no, actually, it was like so. Yeah, I think he said it in the Clone Wars, actually, the season seven, okay. when he's like talking to Ahsoka, and he's like, he, you know, he says, "No, I don't even remember." It was like some episode, or what? I know he just said after he killed, you know, Count Dooku, he became Anakin's okay. apprentice. Or, right, I'm sorry, right. it would make sense. It would make sense. So, I mean, it's not wrong. I just right. wish that so Dooku thing is like was replaced. Is I don't like, like Dooku. Yeah. So, and that's the thing with like, in my opinion, Maul, um, Maul can slice in half. It kind of does give us that that kind of taste of what Obi Wan was capable of too. You know, he he he's the first Jedi who took on the Sith Lord in a thousand years. You know. Well, he didn't take on and, the Sith Lord, but but. I, I know what you're saying, First but even yeah. even the even apprentice. if he even if he held his ground, though against Darth Maul, I think it says enough, especially against a, a Sith that just killed his own master. Um, the problem that you have with the with the prequels is that they introduced. Let's count actually how many villains did they introduce in, in the prequels? There's Darth Maul. We won't get into the gun rays or, or the uh, viceroys or anything like that, but Darth Maul, Grievous. Django Fett and Dooku. Count Dooku is that four, and then and then there's yeah. Sidious in there. So we have five total um, villains, and three movie. Maul gets killed in the movie he's introduced in. Django Fett gets killed in the movie he's introduced in. Count Dooku gets killed after he was in the end of the second movie and in the beginning of the third movie. So he's barely in it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then who else was in there? Grievous. Grievous. Grievous gets Grievous killed gets in the killed. same movie he's introduced <laughs> yeah. in. So, so you're you're getting all these characters that are introduced, and you don't feel any stakes toward towards these characters because they just feel like because what they are, they're just placeholders to get. I mean, they're yeah. just they're just instruments of action scenes essentially. So yeah. So if you would have had this this situation where Maul not only wins in Episode One, um, he also in Episode Two bitches obi-wan and anakin and uh you know even even defends himself or escapes from yoda then you're just building this guy to be like oh my god this guy is clearly more powerful than he was in the first one and then in the Mm -hmm. third one it would be a great way to show 
Anakin's improvement from episode two to episode three. Like he's been just practicing for this moment. He's been wanting this moment and he just gives into his emotions in this fight. And he could have had an epic fucking fight between Darth Maul and and Anakin in his prime, imagine how sick that would have been to see all the flips and the jumps. he did. If you think about it, he did. He was he fought the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. If you think about it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Ahsoka. Ahsoka. Oh, oh well, Ahsoka. yeah, that's not what I mean, <laughs> though. He technically fought the Chosen One's apprentice. Yeah, but that's not what I mean, though. What I mean is, is prime Anakin versus Darth Maul in a live-action movie would have been epic if you thought if you thought phantom menace was good with darth maul and fucking slow ass um qui-gon and uh, a young no. obi-wan can you can you imagine a fight why of, you gotta do qui-gon like qui-gon's a bitch in lightsaber fights why you he's he's no, he's, in, he's a bitch in lightsaber fights um no. got, well that's why he, he had a he if you guys don't know the the colors of the lightsabers um, yeah, Qui Gon was more of a force wielder. Yeah, than, the consular, right? Uh, yeah, right. Right, Cal like, yeah, like, exactly, like yeah. Yoda. But, but it it doesn't. It, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, um, his, his apprentice got Obi Wan, and he got fucking bitch bitch. And if you keep in mind, I mean, the only reason he even stayed, if you think about this, the only reason he even was alive that long is because Obi Wan was there to help him. I mean, without a doubt, obviously Obi Wan's training as a guardian, so he's going to be a better, you know, weapon master. But at the same time, um, if if you take into consideration Darth Maul, who, how many lightsaber fights have we seen him lose in Clone Wars? Like a lot, like a dozen. Yeah, <laughs> and and he, he this poor motherfucker doesn't win anything, and uh, the only time yeah, he does like win a against nameless people. You know? Yeah, he gets he gets slapped everywhere. Like he's like this. Um, someone actually described it. I think it was one of the actors. I think it was either Sam Witwer. I think it was Sam Witwer. He was he was describing Maul's journey. He's like Maul is like this boulder that he, like he rolls up this boulder only for the boulder to fall back over him and he and it rolls back to the bottom. He's this character that like <laughs> fails time and time again. You know. Right. Right. And and that's the thing. You know, I, I don't mean to shit on Qui-Gon. That's not that wasn't the purpose. The purpose was is it would have been epic to see Darth Maul and uh and Anakin. You know, if we saw Anakin and Obi Wan at the end of Revenge of the Sith, you see how epic that fight was. Imagine if we got a Darth Maul Anakin in the beginning of the movie as well. I mean, not to say that quite that Count Dooku's fight wasn't great. I mean it was fine, but I just think it would have been a better arc for not only Darth Maul, um, but also Anakin. It would have made a lot more sense. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I like the prequels as they are. I just don't yeah. like I just don't like someone getting cut in half and living. That's all. That's that's all I got to say is that it doesn't make any sense for that to happen. Because then it leaves the question like with fans going, oh, so was he just crawling in the sewers of Naboo for years or something? Like... <laughs> I mean, is that all he did for all that whole time? Crawling, crawling and shit. He's just, he's just, he's just crawling and in, in fucking gunk and shit. And, yeah. all, all, only to get his legs and then watch his brother get fucking just absolutely murked, and then his family get murked, and then him getting murked by everybody. Yeah, poor guy. But I mean, he's got to be my favorite Sith Lord, honestly. Like he's he's such a iconic character that like um, he's iconic. I just honestly love the most. Like I would, if, I would if I were to pick between Anakin or Maul, I'd probably pick Maul. I have to as say. far as your favorite character, that or for, no, like favorite villain, it's like favorite, favorite villain. villain. Yeah, gotcha. See, you got to expand your knowledge, my man. There's so much out there. What? So much out there. Well, um, oh, what are you talking about? I know my Star Wars. You know your Star Wars. Um, okay, I know well, my Star Wars. Did, did you play Knights of the Old Republic? I played the I, yeah, I played the video. I played the first one. I played, played the, the first one. one yeah. Okay, so you're aware of if my man Darth Revan then? Yeah, he he uh, he he had an old identity of Revan, and then he was, you know, he his mind was wiped by the Jedi Order. Yeah, he's 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 definitely as he's probably my favorite in the sense of someone who. Um, what was a Jedi, and then the Mandalorians were waging war across the galaxy, and he basically yeah. said, "Fuck this, I'm not doing nothing," and then led a bunch of Jedi, and then also was a master of the dark side, 
as mm-hmm. well as being a master of the light side, getting redeemed again. Like that, in my opinion, you, you got he's got the best of all the worlds. He's really complete. Um, there's some other great ones out there, especially in um, you know Star Wars: The Old Republic. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Um, mm-hmm. Not not villain per se, but um, well, you know, I guess it depends what they what they do with him. Malgus is interesting to me. He was kind of a let down to me, but I like the idea, and I wish they would have actually followed through with it of a Sith Lord that essentially says all this infighting that we have, the Empire being racist and being you know shitty, uh, we're gonna change the way it's done. And it was such an interesting idea that they introduced with him. And then you kill him in a flashpoint five minutes after this happens. Um, and then now, of course, they're bringing Aww. him back. Um, but but there's, you know, like there's there's so much so much out there. And in the Darth Bane stuff that, again, I've read through all the Wikipedia stuff, Wikipedia stuff, but I got to actually get into the books. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, you've got uh, S- Sabiath. <laughs> Have you read Deceived, uh, Malgus's book? No, I didn't read. I I read the Wikipedia, mm-hmm. but I didn't actually read it. The only only uh, I book I read was Revan. Read. The only Rebel Republic book I read was the uh, Revan book. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that one was like, the where he's like, I think at the end of the story is like he is captured by the Emperor, and then his wife Vassila Vicious. is oh, now fuck. on this hunt for, or kind of wants to look for him. Vitiate, uh, he's another OP as fuck character. Um, yeah, yeah. Nihilus, of course, you have Nihilus, who's OP as fuck. But I love, I love me some Nihilus. I love the idea of Nihilus. eater of worlds. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea he of him. Plans for breakfast, dude. He just pulls himself, <laughs> pours himself a bowl of planet, and and you know, he um it. he's interesting to me because he's kind of like he's kind of like Sauron in Lord of the Rings. Just wants to yeah. dominate all life and then eat all life for breakfast. I know that's not what Sauron yeah. does, but <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just uh, it's just this like wraith of darkness that's coming and you can't stop it. Although they both get stopped, um, but <laughs> but there there's just there's just so so much so many villains out there, and it's it speaks to it speaks to how deep Star Wars is and and how oh, expansive guys. it is. The best villain I think of they're all. Coming close to- have they canonized Ron? Uh, Revan? Yeah, they're on. Have they canonized Revan yet? Do you guys yeah, know? he's canonized. He, there's Revan Squadron or Revan Legion or something in the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Yep. Um, but but yeah, Thrawn, they haven't like Thrawn's probably the one though. Yeah, Thrawn. They haven't. Yeah, As they like haven't villain, expanded though. upon Revan's character or story, but no. but his <laughs> name in the very least is canon, which leads me to believe that. Um, you know, he uh, was alive at one point. <laughs> he's, he's like Jesus Christ. There's a lot of stories out there. He was probably definitely alive, but we don't know if he was just a guy or if he was a hippie or <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he looks well, like Jesus a little bit. A, a Revan, <laughs> if they made a Revan film or a spinoff, I'd, I'd watch it as long as it's done right. And they don't, you know, make Revan this little bitch boy like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> as long as he's not drinking some alien uh, blue milk titties, then I'll be, I'll be happy with it. But that looked like balls on this alien. But hey, you know, um, I, I think even Thrawn, the way they did Thrawn, he's just not as interesting now as he would have yeah. been if they would have done In it. Canon? If they oh, would have really? done it normally, because now he's part of the Empire. You know, so it's like, eh, whatever. Unless I'm interested to do, see what they do with the Ahsoka stuff. I guess we'll find out um, where they yeah. take his character. But he he gets beat a lot by a little kid and uh, and a bunch of misfits, and it's kind of insulting to his character. <laughs> I know, and honestly, that's the only thing I didn't like about Thrawn's character is that he was just like he kind of saw everything happening, but he let it happen. You know. It's like, I don't think that's Thrawn, you know? Yeah, well, it wasn't. That's it, the issue, yeah. is that, like, you put Thrawn in the height of the Empire, where he has all these, resources, you know, yeah, right. resources, yeah, available yeah. to him. He doesn't Rebels lose. don't exist anymore. That was the whole point like, of, that was the whole point <laughs> of like, the Empire, though. That's it, the only thing that, you know, that was one of, like, Thrawn's you know, what he had to work against was he didn't have enough resources because right. the Empire fell right. apart. Right. And he wasn't really part of 
you know, like Sidious kind of sent him away to, you know, map out the unknown regions during the OT. Right. That's why he's missing. Because if he was there, again, OT, they'd be all dead. They say that I mean, a lot. Basically yeah, basically almost beats they them say that a lot. in his own trilogy. So pa- Paleon kind of actually says that himself. He says it would have turned the battle would of Endor would have turned out much differently if Thrawn was. Yeah, there. exactly. So like they actually they have casted uh, Thrawn yeah. in the, the the Ahsoka series. So as yeah, the, we the voice actor who voiced him. Which I'm excited for. I think I can't see anyone else doing it than Lars Mikkelsen. Lars Mikkelsen. I would yeah. have preferred. I, I do like that cast. I would have preferred. Like yeah, oh, I love it too. I, I love me some Lars Mikkelsen because he was in um, he was in Witcher, and I'm a big fan. So I, I like yeah. him in that. But I would have preferred. I know it's like impossible. He's way too big of a name. But I saw some mm-hmm. concept of him, and I feel like he is like textbook in the way he would have delivered the character. Is uh, my boy Michael Fassbender? My God. He has the the look of Thrawn, and he and he has the just. I feel like he would totally deliver uh, textbook Thrawn, but um, he's too big of a too big of an actor. Um, I say that as they've literally put Woody Harrelson in the Star Wars, but um, you know there are a lot of also a lot of theories on like or you know people fan casting whatever people are like oh you know they should have um uh who is it the the actor who played um Doctor Strange Benedict Cumberbatch Cumberbatch. Yeah, he would have been. What good. do you guys think of that? Like, I didn't. I don't know. I don't really like it. I don't he like would have been good. I don't like the way. He, he, I don't think he looks. I like think Thrawn, he's just. But I think he's just too. I. I don't know. He's like Sherlock, and he's Doctor Strange. Yeah. Right. Just, I, it's pretty on the nose, yeah. eh? <laughs> kind of like if they use like Tom Hiddleston, I'd be like, no, that's Loki. That's. <laughs> yeah, it, it's too yeah. on the nose. Well, I feel like you can you can mis- mismatch it up. I mean, you know, uh, Indiana Jones and in han solo i mean they're they're kind of yeah. the same character um another great yeah. one gandalf yeah. is also um magneto so you know it's it's definitely Ooh. possible i think it just all really comes down to um how they deliver the problem is is that you, you get characters that are too on the nose um uh, um, a great example of this would have been witcher they were trying they were almost going to cast mark hamill as vesemir but Vesemir is, for those who don't know Witcher lore, Vesemir is essentially the Jedi Master of the Witchers. Teaches all the Witchers mm-hmm. how to do their powers and use their powers and teaches them how to be swordsmen. So it's like, okay, so he, he they had him as Last Jedi and fucked up his character there. Now they're going to give him a second chance to be a Jedi Master and Witcher. Like, some characters yeah. <clears throat> are a bit on the nose. Another example of this was... Uh, um, uh, Gandalf, Ian McKellen, they they were gonna put him as um, Dumbledore, and and it's like really? uh, that's kind of the same character, so we're not yeah, we're not is. gonna yeah. do that. <laughs> so that's where you run into it, in my opinion, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, you know, if you go into the Sherlock Holmes, that even Timothy Zahn talked about how Sherlock Holmes was a, was a big inspiration for the character in his in his uh, deducing. Um, also, he's in the uh, movies, um, the Star Trek movies. Um, yeah, you know, there, there's there's a lot of comparisons there. You just don't want to miss, you know, mix and match it. It's like if they put Henry Cavill in the MCU, it's it, it just wouldn't make any sense. But uh, it would, yeah, it, does, it wouldn't. It'd be kind of weird. Although, I, I one of the rumors. <laughs> what's he doing in the MCU? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of the rumors for Rise of Skywalker was that Richard E. Grant was going to be Thrawn. That would and be I good. was just like over the moon about it. And then I that didn't happen. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> if I can maybe see it. After I see it. <laughs> they wasted I it. I, they wasted. I, I feel like they kind of wasted the, um, uh, the, that character. You know? They did completely he should have been like he should have been the guy from the beginning i mean mm-hmm. yeah he should have been yeah he yeah. should have been the hux of the beginning yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They, <laughs> they they completely ru- hux had potential and they ruined his character they made him yeah a, a fucking yeah. he became he became like the little he was a chew the, toy uh, for kylo yeah exactly <laughs> he's yeah. like when a dog gets upset and he grabs his chew toy and throws it around that's what happened with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good, that's a good uh, analogy yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right y'all it's just about 11 o'clock for me here um i know you guys are on the well i know that i know that Sarah, you're actually central time but cat i know it's still bright and well seven almost eight o'clock for you then um but uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to, to say before we wrapped wrapped it up 
Yeah, well, um, I just want to thank you guys for, uh, again, getting me on here. And um, time, I really man. would love to time. join again. If you guys ever want to do another yeah. podcast, hit me up. I'm, yeah, I'm well, free. you got to tell us where to, uh, you guys, you're going to give me my, I you feel and like Hirano. we didn't hit on, like, you didn't get to show your action figures or anything. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks so, for reminding me. Yeah, like, let's see some of the let's see no. some of the good shit you got. Okay, so the thing with uh, my collection right now, it's kind of in the mix of me reorganizing. So I'm not going to show you my shelf because it's kind of messy. But I will show you some <laughs> key, a couple of my favorite characters yeah. that I that I own. But um, one second, and I will grab them no, for you guys. <laughs> Cat, what's up? Gotta show you the Thrawn one. I did. Oh, yeah, I saw I it. Down. Oh, did you see the picture that I sent you? I don't know if you could see it or not. Yeah, I, I looked at it earlier. Pretty sick, eh? What do you do with the eyes? Special effects, right I there. know it looks so good. I know. <laughs> I um, I, uh, I I went to our Walmart by me, and they had they had some Black Series. Um, they had some shitty ones they had um what's his name the guy apollo creed who's the actor who plays apollo creed who's in mandalorian why am i forgetting his name he's an nfl player oh um um fuck the yeah um, carl weathers Pedro Pascal. no carl weathers carl oh, weathers. okay oh yeah. okay yeah, great oh, story. yeah. Uh, they had they had his character um they had his character it's like i don't want that shit um, and, they, <laughs> and they had a hundred baby Yodas. I don't want that shit. Um, they had they had Luke training on Dagobah, which I thought was pretty cool. But if I want Luke, I'm, I want, either want him in Return of the Jedi or I want him in his fight against Vader in Empire. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also some custom ones out there that I was taking a look at. The, the holy oh, yeah. grail for me would be Revan fucking a right revan uh his dark <laughs> and his light side version give me both oh of them. yeah those are cool i don't have those uh black series figures but i would love them definitely would they're, they're expensive, kind of expensive as though. hell yeah yeah they're expensive like 80 dollars <laughs> you can go more yeah, than that yeah. <laughs> you'll be surprised that this is uh okay so this is the anakin skywalker figure one hey. of the first figures i ever got uh, in my collection <laughs> and I had I bought this figure off um, off e Amazon for like like ninety dollars I think. Holy and shit! Yes, that sounds like a bad <laughs> idea. But at the time, I was like, I was like, I really want Anakin, and I was like so tempted to get it, so I got it. And you know, it's worth it. Hey it's man, like, I support it, bro. Like it's you know, it's badass. Awesome figure. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a cool kid. It's a cool figure, dude. If I told and, you uh, what these posters were behind me, how much they cost, you'd fucking laugh at me, man. It's worth it. If you like it, go get it, man. That's what's. Jeez, it's, spoil yeah, exactly. Yourself. So, spoil yourself. Then the uh, my second favorite uh, figure that I own would be the uh, Ahsoka from the Clone Wars. Wicked! I love and, that outfit. Ooh, nice. I love it that. is. It's a cool outfit. It's an iconic one. It's a lot like Satil. Um, you notice that? Satil's yeah, uh, Satil's armor Sean. is a lot like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. She, I mean, you know, I just this is like my favorite version of Ahsoka in general. Like the uh, Clone Wars season seven is like she's because she's matured. You know, she's a wise. You know, she can ask what's oh. going on? She can lead her men. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that one. Yeah. And it, then, it was really my... touching when when Anakin gave her that like squadron of of uh, yeah of soldiers. Oh man, that loyalty was means everything to the clones. Right, that was a touching scene. <laughs> and then like one hour later, the clones are like all shooting at her. <laughs> short lived. Short lived. Uh, thanks for that, Anakin. <laughs> all right, and I'm going to show so Cat's favorite uh, fa Cat's favorite character. <gasps> Yeah, yeah. I love his arms. There's my boy. I love how his arms are. It's like his his uh, his pose, one of his classic poses, where he just got his arms behind his back. He's just, you know, he just kind of, you know, he's proud of himself. <laughs> I wonder what him and in Tarkin could have done together. Oh my gosh, dude, they they toppled the rebellion in the first. You know what I mean? In the new hope, they would have toppled them in the new hope. I feel like there would have been an interesting dynamic between the two because neither one of them would want to take orders from the other. But they would have had if they would have <laughs> instead if you installed them as 
two uh, on the same level and they had to like um, debate each other or, or can, you know, confer with each other. That would have been yeah. an epic dynamic and they oh, yeah. would have probably got a lot of shit done. It would have been really interesting because Tarkin was like, you know, the head of like, uh, like, you know, he was like overseeing the Death Star and like, mm-hmm. that was kind of his domain. But then Thrawn was mm-hmm. like super against the Death Star. He wanted to put, he thought that was a waste. Well, was Tarkin stupid. was, he was wanted to, like, the head of he all wanted, the like, military. Uh, he Tar- wanted to put oh, yeah. that money into uh, like the, the Navy and he wanted to design a new TIE fighter, the TIE Defender. And, like, yeah. Use that instead. He, he wanted the better things than what Tarkin wanted. Like he was the, mm-hmm. he, he had great plans. Well, I yeah, think cool I think I, I am on board with the Death Star with Tarkin because what the Death Star does, had it not have had that weird flaw in it, it's a it's a symbol of <laughs> don't fuck with us. I mean, it's like <laughs> the first one ever. It's like yo, if you fuck with us, we're gonna literally blow your planet up. And it's the ultimate tool of keeping everybody in line. Had they, yeah. had they had destroyed the rebels, they would. No one's going to challenge them. No one's going to. And it, had they, of course, you know, maybe fixed that um, that weakness they had there. So I'm, I'm, I'm for. I see both of their points. I see both of their mm-hmm. points. Uh, Tarkin, good. I'm with it because it's because of the sig- the symbol of what it is and what it represents, and of course the sheer power of it. But then at the same time. It's a lot of money. <laughs> they probably could have done a little bit, a little bit more things with that. Yeah, a little. Yeah. What else you got there? Well, that was the thing. Like bolster your navy, and you never lose right. a battle. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so we have the the duo Obi Wan Kenobi and Qui Gon Jinn. Ah. See, Aww. that's epic. You have some great photos with them. I love that. I know. They're they're awesome. It's like my favorite duo. My this is probably my favorite Jedi and Padawan duo. Yeah. They have very I unique. Really want to see more of them. They have a very unique dynamic between the two of them, because yeah. because Qui Gon is 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 like a maverick. He's like this renegade Jedi master who doesn't totally believe what what is being what's being preached, and he has this different perspective. And then you have Obi Wan, who's like this by the book. I do what what you know the masters preach, and Yoda is is, yeah. is God, and what he says is is goes. And Master you have Yoda said I should be mindful of the living force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. There you go. Exactly. And, and then uh, and then you have the the amazing Qui Gon, who's like, yo, if you guys don't train him, I'm gonna take him myself, and we're and we're gonna yeah. just go. Yeah. And that's so that's so epic. And um, yeah. And, and it. I wish we would have got more Qui Gon. I would have loved to see Me too. a prequel yeah. to the prequel. If you would, yeah, if you would. Honestly, yeah. Need that. yeah. But uh, same, I would same. love. Uh, um, they made a, a the Dooku apprentice loss. I think. I think that's the book. And yeah. I think it talks yep. about Dooku's story with Qui Gon and, yep. and the you know, girl. What, how he leads up to leaving the Jedi Order. Right. And it's like I want to see that on live screen. Right. I want to see that on live screen. Qui Gon is is like a more refined Dooku. He's like a Dooku mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. had he been stronger in his allegiance to the light side, um, because Absolutely. because because Dooku. By the way, I'm full on Team Dooku for what he believes and and what he what he does and and, and his negative feelings towards the Jedi. I have a lot of negative feelings towards the Jedi. They were pretty sorry in the prequels, and I'm not even a big Yoda fan. After the prequels, kind of destroyed Yoda's character. <laughs> Yoda, Honestly, is, yeah. Yoda is like this. He's the Jedi Master of all Jedi Masters and Empire, and he trains uh, um, Luke, and he's like, you know, like this guy is wise beyond, you know, beyond, you know, any of these guys, and he's he's just everything he says you can apply to real life in the real world. And then in the prequels, it's like, yo, the fucking Chancellor, like down the fucking on two blocks away from you, who you can <laughs> see. Is this the Sith Lord controlling both sides of the war? Come on, man. Uh, How do you not see this? Like, you're Yoda. I, feel like, I honestly <laughs> feel like had qui lived, he would have been very good friends with Ahsoka. Like, him and Ahsoka would have been very a very good pair, right. honestly. Because well, they both believe in the Had qui lived, they... Ahsoka would not have... I mean, qui would not have been in the Order, though. Because, because they mm-hmm. weren't going... The only reason that... that Anakin was allowed to be trained was because of 
Qui-Gon's dying wish. If that had right, not yeah. have happened, it, Ahsoka would have been, you know, trained by God knows who and Qui-Gon. Won. But that also <laughs> leads to a great what if scenario of if mm-hmm. if Anakin mm-hmm. was not trained by anyone in the order and he was just trained by Qui-Gon and they were doing their own thing. Then yeah. what would we have gotten? Um, mm-hmm. they, they would have went to go save um, Shmi Skywalker. Um, Anakin would, would never have continued his love uh, situation with Padme. And mm-hmm. then Palpatine's grand scheme falls apart before it even starts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Anakin would, be, would have been sent with uh, Qui-Gon to the Chancellor's office probably had you know Anakin figured out about Palpatine's you know, grand well, scheme. What I'm saying is, I don't think they would have even been associated with the order. I feel like they would have just been off doing adventures of Anakin and Qui Gon. You could do a whole, <laughs> yeah. a whole what if in this situation. Uh, but uh, all right, y'all. But now I do. I was gonna say one more thing. Have sure. you guys ever thought about this? Okay, so for the I was rewatching the Mortis arc because it's one of my favorite arcs in the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. and I thought about this. Obi-Wan saw Anakin fall to the dark side twice. Do you guys think about that? Is this where Anakin sees his future? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty epic, badass scene right there. But I'm wondering, I'm just thinking about this, how I feel, this is why I feel like Obi-Wan is such a sympathetic character, because he loses everyone, and he he literally watched Anakin fall to the dark side twice. Yeah, he saw it in Anakin like you know they they had the little fight or whatever, and he left Obi Wan to die on that on that in that little lava area, and right. then and then in, in Revenge of the Sith he you know he has to face him and he has to watch his brother kill all these and all these Jedi him to die and burning alive. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, I can't imagine. That's what makes me so hyped for the Kenobi show is because we're gonna get a good insight on Obi Wan's. Well, mental state that's why and this is a, this is going to be a, a strong take and in a pretty um you guys might not agree with me but i think obi-wan kenobi is is and i'm not saying the most powerful because he's not the most mm-hmm. powerful i mean dooku bitches him both times they fight not even <laughs> yeah, close. yeah but <laughs> but what i will say is um he, he's probably the greatest jedi that mm-hmm. we've ever seen because yeah. he, he sees yeah. his brother turn on him and and has to fight him and he becomes this monster who's killing kids mm-hmm. like and and he also sees his you know someone he's falling in love with die in front of him he sees his master die in front of him this guy has every opportunity and every reason to abandon the Jedi and fall to the dark side. He is like textbook. Mm. This happens to a character. They fall like that's what happens Mm. with these characters when these situations happen, but he always stayed true to the light side, always stayed true to the Jedi code. And in my Mm. opinion, um, and he's always wise beyond his words. Yeah. Uh, beyond his years. Yeah. Could he have probably helped prevent Anakin falling? Yeah. If he wasn't so wrapped up into the, to the Jedi code and the Jedi order. Sure. But he, he stayed true. And if it weren't for him, the empire doesn't get toppled. And, um, you know, in my opinion, I think he is like, he is like probably the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest Jedi to ever do it. If, if you want a Jedi, there's your textbook Jedi. Yeah. Um, and if, and had also had Obi-Wan, you know, not been around, then Luke wouldn't have been around either. Like he, Luke probably would have been found by the Empire. Right. Absolutely. And Luke doesn't, you know, start his journey to to the the Jedi either. And um, you know, there, there's a lot of EU stuff out there as well. But um, mm-hmm. I, I just think that a, a Jedi has not been tested as much as him, and then continued to stay on the path. Um, mm-hmm. Sure, Yoda is, is a great Jedi, but Yoda. Because we don't know, we don't know how much he's been tested, um, mm-hmm. uh, because there's so much out there that we don't know about him. But he hasn't had the same experiences that that Obi Wan had. And then Mace Windu, um, you know, he he was kind of an asshole. He was just this yeah. arrogant jerk and 
you could point a finger directly at him for Anakin falling. I mean, you could literally <laughs> say sorry, it's all him. his fault. <laughs> yeah, you could say it's all his fault. Um, but uh, in Obi Wan, part of it, he was a little part of it. I mean, he kind of shit. If he would have just, if he would have just let Anakin come with him, Anakin would have seen this fucking this this devil kill. <clears throat> three masters at half yeah. second but he didn't let him come so only he gave him the rank of master <laughs> <laughs> but all right so well with that being said i do got to wrap it up it is actually level yeah, one now for sure. um thanks for hanging out Sarek. where can the people find no you at i got your instagram here but where else can they find you at um you can find me on tiktok obviously and um you got youtube you going on me. what's that you have a youtube channel I do, but I don't. I've posted like one thing on there, so you could find my Cedarwall Studios on uh, my YouTube. I could, I should probably link that in my Instagram, but I don't, I don't have any content on there. As well, now. we're gonna so. get, we're gonna hopefully get you some subs. So check out his YouTube channel, yeah. and uh, yeah, and definitely check out his Instagram. His Instagram has some just absolutely amazing stuff. Um, I, I do highly recommend it. Thank you all for watching. Um, Cat, we're working on her still. Uh, we're four months in on this and we're still working on her. Um, <laughs> you can find her lady underscore Quinn underscore. Yes. That's Malibai Quinn and Swotor. If you didn't know, she absolutely loves this guy. Um, even though, um, the actual voice actor is not interested in the ladies. <laughs> I can't help being in love with Richard Temerson. <laughs> it's like one of those things. My brother, my brother is gay. And he has, um, he always, he talks to me sometimes about, um, when he becomes friends with girls and then they end up mm -hmm. falling in love with him. And he's like, always has to break the news to them all the time. He's like, he's, yeah. oh, no. I just imagine how the relationship goes or how the, how the conversation goes. Yeah, that's gotta be <laughs> Very counterproductive. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, you know, the thing, the thing we're getting off topic here, but the thing that I, I always appreciate, um, is, is how well put together, uh, gay men are they're always got the nice the nice outfit going yeah. they got perfect mm -hmm. teeth perfect haircut they they're on right. top of their shit they have a clean apartment clean house and then and then it's like oh this guy's amazing he's the one and then, he, and then he, you come on to him and then he's like he's like honey i don't like girls <laughs> gives you gives you the snap and everything now i'm just uh, now i'm just being offensive <laughs> Let me, yeah, uh, me cry. All right, guys. Well, with that being said, after my um, <laughs> my my speech on, on what I know about the, me out on the gay the community, <laughs> just all right, <laughs> fine. It's okay, cat. It's, it's okay. Guys. Yeah, yeah. Take I it also in. love other men. Um, <laughs> <aren't gay. laughs> yeah, those, those you like those Korean um uh what what are they called? What's the K the K-pop Korean dudes that look like girls? That's it. That's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> not. I I listen to the music, but I'm not. Interested in them. Jeez, I like, yeah. I like middle-aged British gentlemen. Uh, I gotcha. I that's gotcha. My, oh yeah, like, One Freddy Direction, Cargo. right? No, middle age. <laughs> be 40 or above. What One do you mean? Oh, <laughs> I didn't hear the yeah. middle age part. I'm sorry. I, I love it. Age. And this is why we're the best Star Wars podcast <laughs> right here. We talk Hell about yeah. gay people Hell and yeah. K pop consecutively in the final yeah. five middle minutes. Middle British dudes. And middle aged British dudes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that being said, guys, like, comment, subscribe, check out Patreon, and uh, let us know what you think. Check out our homeboy here, Mitra Surik. Uh, find uh, <laughs> Cedarwald up Studios, and may the force be with you guys. Take it easy. Have a good, uh, well, good whatever it is where you're at. Yeah, <laughs> take it easy. Goodbye, my